think I knew uh, in about 1967 when I was still in grade school that this was the only job I wanted to do. Uh, and I had a friend who I grew up with and he, he got a job out here in Loveland. And he told me about some of the other cities. And, and, uh, so I looked for the opportunities and my wife uh, and I decided this would be a good place to move to. So uh, I applied with Aurora and a few other departments out here. Uh, Aurora came calling first, so uh, this is where I ended up. And I think uh, the nice thing about police work is, you know, everybody starts in the same place. It's, uh, you start in the academy and you go to patrol, and um, so I did my time in patrol on graveyard shift. Uh, then I had an opportunity to uh, uh, work out of the academy for about three years. Uh, my primary function there was producing uh, training videos. Uh, but I also got some instruction time in, and uh, especially with uh, driving. Um, promoted to sergeant in 1995. Um, <clears throat> learned then and tried to get my officers that were working for me out of the patrol car. Um, probably my the, the really significant assignments for me have been um, almost 20 years as a hostage negotiator, starting off there as an officer in 1991, um, and then getting promoted and getting lucky to stay there as a supervisor uh, for the rest of the time. I was lucky early on that I had, uh, I got to work with some really terrific sergeants as I was, when I was a patrol officer. And uh, um, good sergeants, kind of old, old fashioned kind of sergeants, uh, um, but who took real good care of their guys. And then as, as I wanted to promote they were my role models and my, uh, my mentors uh, and, and following in that because I am still kind of an old fashioned uh, kind of a guy for that too. So I had, had some luck in getting those sergeants and recognizing that those sergeants were, were special and that's the path I wanted to go on as opposed to some of the other sergeants I might have had over my career that were not nearly as good. Uh, but for the most part, the ones I had, I got to mirror that. and. Uh, uh, and stay in contact with a lot of them and uh, say, you know, what would, what would he have done in this situation and, and kind of follow that path. So, <clears throat> you know, I was lucky there um, to be able to do that. And I, and I hope doing that, that there's somebody behind me you know, that's, you know, looking and saying, you know, what, what would Wilkes have done in this? You know, so they're, they're really not looking at what I would have done. They're looking at the sergeants that I followed, who probably looked at the sergeants who they followed. Um, and and I, I think in a subtle way, you know, sergeants who worked here 20 or 30 years ago still are in here because they mentored the group that mentored me. You know, then it gets passed on, and hopefully those sergeants pass it on to the guys that are in the academy today. And uh, um, I look at it that way. Uh, in 1996, I went to then Lieutenant Murphy because they were having, I heard they'd had, or they were having trouble with the uh, Explorer Post and they were looking at disbanding the Explorer Post. <clears throat> and then I asked him, you know, can I work for three months or so to try to make sure the Post survives and we have the kids will have an opportunity. Um, so I asked for three months and I, I stayed for uh, uh, 20 years uh, doing exploring, and that's that's probably been one of the more rewarding experiences is uh, participating with those young kids, and then you know, 20 years later they're they're in their 30s, they got their own families, and they're staying in contact with me, and I'm they're sh sending me pictures of their kids, and you know that's that's been the probably the most you know, the most re rewarding experience on the police department is just working with that group. Um, probably the night that uh, Eddie Hocum was killed was the single most impactful night of my career. Uh, being on scene with uh, with Eddie, uh, <clears throat> you know, getting the medical people there to help him, and then having to be at the hospital with him that night. Um, it was a a difficult night. It's been a difficult experience, uh, and it's one that you know it's it's been since '87, so uh, it's been 30 years, and it's still still with me. So, um, and I think 
a lot of officers will have an experience like that in their career. <clears throat> and not everybody perhaps, but a lot of us will. Or that's you know, something that, I mean, it was critical. I knew it was critical. Uh, it was something I hadn't faced before. Um, so it, uh, it, it, it was the single most impactful night of my career. Probably for the rest of my life I'll have that. Yeah. But in this career, um, keep in mind that you're going to deal with a lot of bad people, sketchy people. <laughs> and, uh, and that's going to taint you a little bit. And not everybody's a bad guy. There is a lot more really good people out there who support us. And maybe you don't get that voice all the time because certainly uh, media isn't always very supportive and media uh, likes to put out the bad stuff. That's what sells. And, uh, and that's what they've got to do. They're in a business to sell a product. But I think most people recognize they need the police. They want the police around. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a lot of good people Maybe they don't get to live in the best of neighborhoods and in the best of houses, but they live in where they can afford. But they're really good people, and they're just trying to raise their children the best they can and, uh, and cross their fingers and hope their kids turn out good, just like the rest of us. Uh, and you got to remind yourself that you know, they're good people, and sometimes good people make bad choices, and they're still good people. Um, watch being tainted. Because uh, this is still the best career there ever is. <laughs> You're not in the office much. Uh, you get to meet all kinds of people, especially on patrol. Your day is never going to be the same thing. You're never going to have two days that are going to be exactly alike. Um, you know, I can't imagine having done any other career than this. Uh, and I'm sure going forward, police work will continue to change because it's changed a lot since 1977. The radios, the technology, the weapons, the body armor, all of that we didn't have in 1977. <clears throat> so it's much better now. It'll be interesting to see somebody sitting on this chair, you know, 33 years from now to think back, you know, we didn't have that in 2016 and what, what the changes will be. Um, hopefully it'll still be a good job, especially if it's one you want to do. And, uh, it's a hard job. It's not for everybody. You look at our retirement board, <clears throat> and we got lots of names of our retirees. And that's just a small fraction of the people that started the academy. Everybody else fell out along the way. And a small group of people get on a retirement board and uh, because they worked very hard to get there. <clears throat> and you know, I got a lot of respect for all those people whose names are going to be next to mine <laughs> you know, uh, now and, uh, uh, because they made it all that way.